So if your gallbladder has been removed and you want to supplement with ox bile or purified bile salts, know that the timing and the dose could really vary greatly from person to person. It can be a little bit complicated to figure out what's going to work best. So in this video, I'm going to give you some factors that you can think about and consider while you're figuring out the right timing and dose that's going to work best for you. Let's jump in. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. Now remember, I'm not a doctor and I'm not telling you to supplement with ox bile. I just want to give you some information about how this digestive system works and ways that you might be able to optimize your digestion if you've lost your gallbladder. And the reality is a lot of people can have their gallbladder removed and not experience any symptoms. And I'll explain how that can happen in a second. But for most people who have had their gallbladder removed, they will likely need to supplement with ox bile indefinitely if they really want to optimize their ability to digest their food. So know that this is going to be a little bit of a complicated scenario and you may have some homework that you need to do. This is really not going to be a, ah, just take it here and that's going to be how it goes because the right dose and the right timing is really going to vary from person to person. There is no one size fits all scenario when it comes to using ox bile for someone who's lost their gallbladder. So to be able to figure this out for yourself, you really need to understand the natural bile function. And bile is this soapy substance that's made by the liver up here and then it comes down in this biliary pathway and gets stored in the gallbladder. And the gallbladder's job is to concentrate that bile so that a small amount of bile can be more effective, okay? So when we eat food, our stomachs make hydrochloric acid or HCL, and that acid is meant to help us acidify that food and start that breakdown process. So that's a very important process to acidify your food correctly. Otherwise, we can't really break it down and get the nutrients out of that food. So once the food is acidified, it will leave the stomach and come down here into this duodenum, which is the first part of the small intestine. And once this acidic product hits this duodenum, that signals the gallbladder to squirt this alkaline bile. Bile is an alkaline substance. It triggers it to squirt it down here into this duodenum and the alkaline bile helps us neutralize those acids. So this alkaline substance of the bile meeting the acid substance from the stomach, when those collide, it creates like a sizzle. And that really helps us bust that food apart and get all the nutrients out of that food. Okay, so the problem is there's a lot of things in our world that can cause the bile not to really flow correctly and it kind of makes it too thick and sticky to really move like it should. And then if it stays in the gallbladder, the gallbladder continues to concentrate it until it concentrates it into sludge or eventually even stones. And then we have to have the gallbladder removed. So this is a likely scenario. There's other causes that may make someone need to have their gallbladder removed, but this is a common scenario that seems to play out. And I'll have some links to some research that you can check out if you want to understand that a little bit better in the description below this video. Okay, but if the gallbladder has been removed, now there is no place to store that bile. And this can create a whole lot of trouble because the bile is what we use to emulsify or break down our dietary fats. And we need to be able to break down those dietary fats for the body to be able to use them correctly and for us to be able to do things like assimilate fat soluble vitamins like vitamin A, E, D, and K and those things can be kind of important. So we need to be able to process those fats correctly. Also, if this bile is not coming down to help us neutralize the acids that are leaving the stomach, then those acids can continue to move through the intestinal tract. Now, a lot of times there's bicarb that will come down from the pancreas and that'll help neutralize a little bit. But when there's not enough bile, a lot of times it's not really going to get neutralized correctly and then it'll move through this system in a state that is a little bit too acidic. So that can be a problem because the acid in the stomach is made to help us break down our protein. Well, guess what this intestinal tract is made of? Yeah, it's protein. So if this acid is moving through here unneutralized, then you could digest a hole in your intestines and the body doesn't want that to happen. So it says, oh, well, let's just bring as much water as we can here to cool this off and we'll just rush it out of the system and then it comes shooting out the back door and it lifts us off the toilet like a rocket. So that is one possible cause for this chronic diarrhea issue that is very common 
with those who have lost their gallbladder. Okay, it's not the only issue that can happen. We'll talk about constipation in a second. But this is a scenario that can happen when there's not enough bile to come down and help us neutralize those acids. When the gallbladder is removed, the liver should still be making bile and it should still be coming down this pathway into the intestinal tract but you don't get this bolus of bile that shows up after a meal. It doesn't get triggered by the gallbladder to drop it down. It's just kind of dropping down there all the time. And that has the ability to create some irritations that can create diarrhea. That's one possible cause. But if someone has their bile flowing down here all the time, even though the gallbladder is gone, they may have enough bile to help us neutralize the acids that are leaving the stomach, to help them digest their fats correctly, and everything can work okay. And they won't experience any type of symptoms. And they'll be like, oh, I had my gallbladder out 10 years ago. Everything's been fine ever since. And that's because this is working correctly. But a lot of times when bile becomes so thick and sticky that it doesn't flow, then it can also back up and make this not flow either. And they'll remove the gallbladder, but they might not do anything to clear this pathway. And then this bile is not flowing like you want it to. You really want this bile to flow because the liver filters out all the toxins and junk out of the body that shouldn't be there. And it puts a lot of that into the bile so that when the bile comes down and it goes through the intestinal tract, it can carry those filth and toxins with it and then they go out the back door. That's the main detox pathway for the whole body. So if this is too backed up and it's too thick and not flowing, then the body isn't really detoxing like it should. So we'll put a video in the description below that you can check out for five ways to improve bile flow. And there's some steps that you can use to kind of thin out the bile and maybe dilate that pathway and open it up and get it flowing if there's signs that it might not be flowing at all. So uh, that's something that someone might do without a gallbladder just to make sure that this bile is flowing and then that could reduce their need to supplement with ox bile. They may still need to supplement with some, but they may not need it as much if that bile is flowing correctly. So when you're gonna to try to figure out this timing and the dose for you, we wanna look at is a person's stool leaning a little bit too on the loose side or are they a little bit constipated? Because someone can lose their gallbladder and still be constipated. There's lots of reasons a person can be constipated, but one thing we wanna look at is that the stool will move through the intestinal tract at a pace according to its acidity level. So if acids don't get neutralized, that stool is gonna to be too hot and move through too fast. If a person is not making enough stomach acid, which is very common, then that stool will be more on the alkaline side and it'll move through at a slower pace and that slower pace can cause that stool to get dry and hard and difficult to move and create a chronic constipation issue. So there's gonna be some other things we'll talk about in a second, but this is something that we need to consider when we're looking at the dose. Because if somebody's constipated, they've lost their gallbladder, but now they're constipated, if they're gonna add ox bile in there, then this ox bile is going to come in and further alkalize the stomach. Because remember, bile is an alkaline substance. So if they further alkalize that stomach, they're going to magnify that constipation issue. Now there's some people that say, if you're constipated, you should take ox bile because it's like this lubricant that helps things move through. And that's totally possible. I've seen that happen about twice in probably 500 cases. So it's, it's a little bit more rare, but it is possible. But for most people, when they're leaning on the constipated side, if they take ox bile, they're going to slow that stool down even more. So in that case, a person might want to take steps to fix that constipation problem before they start supplementing with ox bile so they don't slow it down more. And we'll put a link in the description below for our video on understanding constipation. So you can check that out if that's a problem for you. So now when it comes to figuring out the dose and the timing, know that this is going to be trial and error. You're not just going to be able to do, oh, just take this. It's going to be jazzy. There's going to be some things where you need to figure out the timing and the dose. So first we'll talk about adjusting the dose. So when we look at taking this ox bile, we need to understand that the, uh, the bile is supposed to come down from the gallbladder into the duodenum. Bile should not be going into the stomach. That's not how the body works because bile is alkaline. If you're gonna alkalize the stomach while you're trying to digest food, that's going to decrease your ability to break that food down. So a lot of people make the mistake of taking ox bile with their meal. Well, they're turning off their ability to acidify that food 
break it down and get the nutrients out of that food. It's a really big mistake. It's a very common mistake. And we'll put a link to our video in the description below for how to avoid common ox bile and tudka mistakes. And I go into that a little more depth there. You can check that out if you want to understand that better. But know that taking ox bile with your meal is decreasing your ability to get the nutrients out of the food that you're eating. So when we're taking ox bile, we really want to take it away from food so that it can move through the stomach while there's not food in there. Or we want to eat our food and allow it to acidify for 60, 90, 120 minutes and then take the ox bile to help neutralize those acids so then it can move through at an appropriate pace. So when you're figuring out the dose or the amount of ox bile that you might need to help neutralize the acids that are coming from digesting that food, we need to think about, am I bloated? Am I having acid reflux? And what's the speed of my stool? Am I leading too far on that diarrhea side or too far on the constipation side? Okay, so if you're bloated, that's usually coming from the stomach not acidifying the food correctly. Now there's bloating that can happen further down in the small intestine too, but again, this is usually from an inability to acidify the food, and now there's bacteria in the stomach or in the small intestine. But when they come in and set up camp in the wrong place like that, then they're coming in because there's not enough stomach acid to wipe them out when they come in. The door is open. They're coming in and they come right through. So this stomach acid doesn't just help us digest the food. It's the barrier to the whole body. When bacteria and varmints are coming in on the food we're eating, they're supposed to die in an acid bath. So if we're bloating, it's usually because the stomach is not acidifying correctly. So if a person's bloated and they put ox bile in the stomach, they're going to magnify that bloating in a lot of cases because they're making the stomach more alkaline. So in that case, a person might need to take steps to acidify that stomach. And we'll have a link in the description below for our video on how to correct low stomach acid issues. And you see that you're really gonna have some homework because if these issues are going on, it's not something I can just tell you in a quick video to do. You're gonna have to dig in a little bit and figure out the right steps for you and your situation. Okay, now if a person's having acid reflux, this is also caused by not enough stomach acid. That stomach acid is supposed to trigger this LES valve at the bottom of the esophagus to close. And if there's not enough acid there, it won't trigger it to close, and the small amount of acid that is there is going to come up and burn us. So if someone's having acid reflux and they put that ox bile in there, then that might alkalize that stomach a little bit more. So a person might need to take steps like maybe using some apple cider vinegar to help acidify that stomach a little bit, maybe supplementing with betaine HCL to help acidify that stomach. And if you want to understand how to do all these steps a little bit better, chapters three and four of my book, Kick Your Fat in the Nuts, walk you through how to figure out which aspects of digestion may not be working correctly and what steps you can take to improve those. And I'll put a link in the description below where you can get that whole book totally for free. And I'll just, you can jump to chapters three and four and that'll walk you through that process. But if a person is bloating or they have acid reflux and they need to acidify that stomach more to correct that issue, but they don't have enough bile to neutralize those acids, well, they could really magnify a loose stool issue. They could also create a loose stool issue if there wasn't one. So when a person takes steps to acidify the stomach, but their stool is already loose, they're really going to have to adjust this dose. They're probably going to need a higher dose. And I hear from people all the time that they do great taking one ox bile tablet. Maybe some people need to take two, three, four. It really depends on your situation and you're going to have to do this trial and error stuff to figure out what's going to work best for you. But if a person had to take steps to acidify the stomach and then if the stool was too loose, then they might need to increase the dose of that ox bile or they could adjust the timing of that ox bile, okay? So maybe they eat their food and maybe just 60 minutes later, maybe they take the ox bile to neutralize those acids then so that the acids are not moving through and creating the loose stool issue. But if a person is taking their ox bile 60 minutes after their meal and then they get really bloated, well, then they may need to move that further away from the meal. So it's going to depend on what you experience. Is a person more bloated or maybe more acid reflux and maybe showing that oh, I need to acidify this a little bit better before I put the ox bile in? Or is the stool really loose and the person needs to figure out, oh, maybe I need to put the ox bile in sooner so I neutralize those acids before they run off and come shooting out the back door. Does that make sense? So if you're bloated or having reflux, you might want to move that ox bile a little bit further away from the meal. Or if your stool is too loose, 
you might want to move it a little bit closer. And I talk to a lot of people who do really well adding a dose first thing in the morning when they wake up to just kind of get that in the stomach and get it moving through. So maybe it's in this intestinal tract when these acids come through and helps to slow that down. Or maybe they take a dose at the end of the day, right before they go to bed, after the food has had time to acidify and move out of the stomach, they take a dose so that that can move through while they're sleeping and help slow things down if things are moving too fast. So this morning and night situation is usually a little more beneficial for those where the stool is moving a little too fast. Maybe it's a little bit too loose and they really wanna slow that down. So other factors that might dictate what's going on is the level of stomach acid. This level of stomach acid here can really vary from person to person. So that might dictate how much ox bile that you need to use to slow down the acids moving through the system too quickly. Another issue we need to think about is our circadian rhythm. So it was Dr. Emanuel Rivisi who helped us understand that the body has this natural circadian rhythm at the cellular level. And during the day, the body should be in a more catabolic state where the body is very good at creating energy and breaking tissues down so that they can be rebuilt. And in that state, the body will send more water to the bowels and less to the kidneys. And then at night, the body should move into an anabolic state where the body is very good at sleeping and resting and repairing and rebuilding things. And in that state, the body likes to send more water to the kidneys and less to the bowels. So both of these states are appropriate. We want both of these things to happen. The problem is a lot of people can get stuck in one of these states most of the time and they're not really switching back and forth like they should. So if somebody's really stuck in a catabolic state and the body's sending most of the water to the bowels, that can create some chronic diarrhea issues. And if a person is really stuck in this anabolic state and the body's sending most of the water to the kidneys, that can really create some chronic constipation issues. So when we're looking at this timing of the ox bile and trying to slow down a stool that's too loose or help constipation issues, we also need to take that circadian rhythm issue into consideration. And you can check out our video on is my circadian rhythm off and that'll give you some indications of things that you can look at to figure out if you might be leaning too far on one of those sides and is one of those issues also creating problems with your stool. Maybe it's not just the lack of a gallbladder that's creating the diarrhea. Maybe you're dealing with what we call a catabolic imbalance and the body's sending too much of the water to the bowels. So again, homework, right? There's things to consider. You're not just gonna take a remedy and fix these problems. So try to move past that mindset because the people who live in that remedy mindset go from remedy to remedy to remedy just looking for an answer. And man, that worked for my friend. Why isn't it working for me? I must just be broken. It's really about looking at how your body's operating and learning how to work with your body instead of against it. And the last thing to consider is that there might be some Tudka options. Tudka is a synthetic form of ox bile. And this can really help us digest our fats correctly and can really improve our ability to access fat soluble vitamins. So it can be beneficial, but a lot of people feel like Tudka does not have the ability to neutralize acids the way that bile or ox bile can. So you're not getting the full benefit that you would from bile if you're supplementing with Tudka. But if Tudka is not neutralizing acids, you might also be able to take it with your food or closer to your food to help you digest those fats better. And some people, they might, you know, like a vegan might not want to use ox bile. They might not want to use an animal product. They could use some Tudka and at least get some of the benefits of helping them digest their fats better. But I don't feel like Tudka really helps to neutralize the acids. So it might not slow down a chronic diarrhea issue unless the chronic diarrhea is just coming from the problem of an inability to break those dietary fats down correctly. A lot of times that'll have the body like, I can't break down these fats so I can't really use them so let's just get them out of here and that can create a chronic diarrhea issue. So it's possible to create some improvement with some Tudka even without using ox bile, but I prefer to see people use ox bile because they're getting all the benefits then. They're able to help improve that ability to neutralize the acids leaving the stomach, but also emulsify their fats and get uh, fat soluble vitamins out of their food and all that kind of stuff. So you can see this is really complicated. It can be really annoying trying to figure out the right timing and the dose, but if you're paying attention to these things and you're listening to your body and am I bloated or am I having reflux and what's my stool doing, you can make the right adjustments to figure out what's gonna work for you. 
Now, if you want to understand this issue a little bit more about why you really don't want to take ox bile with your meal, you can jump over right now and check out our video on how to avoid ox bile and tudka mistakes. But if not, you have some work to do, so get to work and, and let us know how it goes.